right, you battlers, you know what it is. Jay Devin back at it with another Go Battle League video. So this video, obviously, it's going to be featuring a Pokemon that I included as one of my Pokemon in the, what was it, five Pokemon, I guess, to consider for Ultra League, which if you haven't watched the video and you'd like to, go ahead and watch it right now. I'll put it right up there. I'll put the link for it there. Um, I think it might be worth the watch. There are several Pokemon. There, there's even more than I even included in that video, honestly, to consider for the Ultra League. And uh, this video today is going to be featuring one specifically and um, you know how I used it in application and what I've tried to make it work in the Go Battle League for Ultra. So that obviously it's going to be Lapras um, running the Ice Shard Surf Ice Beam. Again, the asterisks on the moveset that you can see up there, the little red ones, that's because they are legacy. And yet again, I said this before, if you don't have a legacy it's currently not obtainable in the game um we've had several events to get it but if you don't have one and you know you really want to try one out after watching this video then i recommend you do whatever you can to find somebody to trade with to see if you can potentially get that so um yeah lapras ice shard ice shard surf and ice beam obviously the main matchups you don't want to see are um mel metal you don't want to see registeel for example but um, even, even with those two matchups, what I like about Lapras is neither of them, if the Lapras is at full health, neither of them are going to one-hit KO the Lapras, whether that's with Rock Slide or Super Power, even Thunderbolt, even the Focus Blast from a Registeel is not going to one-hit KO the Lapras, and that's sheerly because of, because of its bulk, right? So here's the um, possible um, stat IV spreads pulled from pvpoke.com, link in the description below. But these possible stat IV spreads are what the Lapras is going to have in terms of its stats in the Ultra League, and that's gonna be based off your IVs, right? So for the, the, total, um, the total stat product to have like the most available is going to be a rank one PVP IV, which right here, as you can see, for Ultra League will be six um, attack, 15 defense, and then 13 stamina. So um, no matter you know what the rank ends up being, the range of the stat product that you can see for each um, stat is right there. So attack can be 130.4 to 142.3, defense 136.5 to 149.4, stamina 215 to 230. And I think with the rank one, the attack obviously is going to be really low. It's as low as possible. And the rank one Lapras is going to be at level 40. So you'd have to max it out. Um, but the defense is, I think, um, at a rank one, it's like 149.3. And then the stamina, I think, is 229. So you'll have mega bulk with a rank one. But as far as like chip damage and or the super effective damage with Lapras, obviously, it's not going to hit quite as hard. But again, that, you know, hitting quite hitting hitting hard in matchups is not why I run Lapras. I run Lapras because of its typing coverage and because of its sheer bulk. You know, we can work the switch clock and we can work the timer because we know, you know, such and such move again, rock slide, focus blast, those things are not gonna one hit KO if we're at if we're at full health, right? So that's why I like to use Lapras. Um, it dominates in some matchups just because of its bulk, whether it's dealing super or super effective or neutral damage. It's it's really just amazing. And and all these sets, um, I wanna say, I honestly don't remember what my win to loss runs um my you know my win to loss ratio was in in the in the battle videos that are being featured over there i want to say in the first set i went four for five that's being featured and then in the set after i, I was either undefeated i either went five for five or was another four for five one of those two i'll probably put it up somewhere after i <laughs> edit the video but yeah lapras lapras can be a monster it can beat a swampert obviously that could be bait dependent if they land um, two earthquakes i believe they're going to win and um to do that they basically as an open for example they they want to bait with a hydro cannon and if you call the bait correctly and you don't shield which usually i don't even if it's going to be an earthquake in the open i still don't shield um because if they you know if they're throwing extra mud shots and they're building up and they're going to go for that earthquake and you can feel in your gut they're going to go for the earthquake then typically what i like to do is i don't throw a charge move. I'll just keep using ice shards because a lot of the times they don't want to take extra damage on their Swampert or use shields on it because I might have a steal of my own in the back, for example, right? So um, sometimes I've noticed they like to save the Swampert. So I'll just keep throwing ice shards. And then a lot of people, this is another thing that I really like about Lapras. A lot of people do not um, understand or they don't correctly estimate how quickly um, Lapras is going to be able to access more serves combined with ice shards. So that's why I say on the first Earthquake, if they throw an Earthquake against a Swampert as an open, I don't shield. 
then I'll just continue throwing ice shards. And then if they're building up for another earthquake, then I'll typically just throw double surf. And then we usually can win the matchup after that just by using ice shards. Um, it depends on, I guess, you know, the rank of their Swamp Bird, how much damage is it gonna do? Is it attack weighted? Is it a rank one, for example? That, that matchup can be, can be kind of dependent. But um, again, with Lapras, um, I do typically like to pair it with Giratina to be, you know, over overpowering teams with that combo. The main weakness, obviously, to the combo is Melmetal and or Registeel. You know, if they bring one or both on a team, then you're going to struggle, which is why I typically like to throw something in the middle with this lineup that's going to be able to handle um, Registeel and or Melmetal. So as an example, you could go Lapras, um, Lucario, Giratina. You could do that. You could go Lapras, Swampert, Giratina, which I did in this specific battle. You could go... They do. There's there's so many options. You could go Lapras, um, Charizard, Giratina. Like there's so many options that you can do. But definitely, if you run the the comp this specific way, if you pair Lapras with Giratina, you always want to make sure you have some kind of answer for those for those steals. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling a lot in those in the you know in those steel matchups. So you don't necessarily need to overcompensate for the weakness by throwing out something like Blaziken or Lucario. But you know if you work out the shield play and everything correctly then you will just completely dominate teams that way um lapras again is, a, is another example that i like to use as something that can actually um, answer and stand a chance against teams that um basically they, they will weigh their strategy around opening with the articuno um <laughs> the articuno lead made by king is just it can be so overpowering too if you open and you are not in an advantageous open then you're gonna have a lot of problems against the team that does that um, and this, 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 you know, kind of this circumvents that. This does not care about a, um, um, an Articuno open. Um, really, the only, the only way I guess you could lose advantage against an Articuno open is if they have ancient power and you don't use any shields for some reason. But even then, it's still playable. That's why I love leading, leading with Lapras. It still gives us plays and options. Um, another thing, if you run Lapras this way or use Lapras, period, that you might want to consider is its weakness that it has to Polyrath because it doesn't have really any good or any advantageous matchups against Polyrath unless it's unless you know their Polyrath is already low health and you're at full health and maybe I guess you have one shield then potentially you could win but even then like you do not want to see a Polyrath or really other fighters unless it's like a, a Blaziken and you can throw the super effective surf that way but um, with the Polyrath if they open with it you are definitely going to have a rough time um, what, what are some ways I guess that we could work around a Polyrath open if you open with Lapras. You could do Armored Mewtwo, that's considerable. You could do Cresselia in the middle, but you know, if you do picks like that and you still have Giratina, then you're gonna have a lot of troubles if they go Polyrath and, and Steel, right? So that's why sometimes I just like to include something like Swampert. And um, most of the time, to be honest with you, I don't, even, even though it sucks and it feels bad, I don't wanna save the Lapras in that open. Um, I will just let the Polyrath win that lead matchup, and then I will play the rest of that game based off of that. Because if they bring the Polyrath, mad respect to them, they brought it, they're definitely going to win the lead. I don't want to swap out and then lose um, that switch advantage, right? Because switch advantage can be huge. Um, you know, if you swap into Giratina, that's still not going to be an ideal matchup. The Polyrath can win if you don't use your shields. And if you swap in immediately to your other Pokemon that can answer Polyrath, chances are they're going to swap out and then as the rest of the battle plays out, you're just going to lose the game because you you swapped first, right? So um, that makes me think of possibly, you know, another way or even more ways that you can win with still including Lapras and Giratina. For example, you could, uh, what can win against Articuno and Polyrath? I'm pretty sure Armored Mewtwo can still do both. Um, I think he's not going to be as ideal in the... Uh, lead matchup against an Articuno and preferably the way I would I guess personally want to run Mewtwo is with um, Confusion, Psy Strike, and then Dynamic Punch. But if you open with him and then run Lapras Giratina, I think you're definitely going to want Rock Slide to have more of a threat I guess and more of an immediate answer to that Articuno open strategy. Um, but even that way then you still leave yourself too exposed to metal. So. Now that I say, you know, it's like a Lapras does not sound very attractive. I don't know that I want to use it or run it. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, Lapras has performed very, very well for me. Really, it just depends, I guess, on... I, 
think really what using Lapras has come down to for me, um, in my opinion and in my experience, like it really comes down to discipline. Like I said, if I see a Polyrath open, most of the time, like I just need to suck it up and let the Lapras go and then play the rest of the matchup based off of that. You know, we, we could even include like a Venusaur, for example. We could have a Venusaur, um, Lapras, and then Giratina and have the Venusaur sit in the middle. But to basically force their swap after you use the lead, I would run a Razor Leaf Venusaur, for example, because then if they have, you know, any other water, ice water, or, you know, Swampert, or even their Polyrath, they are going to feel much more inclined to swap out. And then the Razor Leaf Venusaur can still do heavy damage against like other Pokemon in the meta. Obviously it doesn't want to see a dragon. You know, we can talk about those matchups all day, but that's that's just another example of a way that you could run Lapras in to make it work. And for the most part, honestly, I have had some success with Lapras as a second pick, which I think I did in my previous video where I featured a Lucario. Um, but for the most part, like I like leading with it because if you see a Giratina lead, usually they're going to swap and then you just immediately take the advantage if you see the articuno lead if they don't have ancient power most of the time they're going to swap and then you take advantage that way like so many popular opens lapras is just going to overpower it can like i said again it can beat a swamper and that's a pretty popular open as well um so again you know it really just depends on how you play it hopefully it doesn't take me long to catch this cobalion if it does i'm probably just going to fast forward to the uh, next battles no no First ball, okay, hype. I think we're going in for the next set, which I remember we only featured two sets for this video. So we'll start, I guess, casting the battles now as we continue just to like kind of demonstrate how I, you know, use Lapras in real time, like in application, rather than just talking about it and telling you the matchups, right? So right here, we see the Swampert open. I'm just gonna throw the Surf. They do not shield. Um, they built up to an earthquake. Oh, surprisingly, I shield. At this point in using Lapras, I don't, I don't shield. Um, so I played this one a little differently for some reason. Uh, this was pretty early on to when I first powered up the Lapras and invested into it though. So I guess that's why I played it a little different. I might've been learning more, but um, they, they, I know for a fact, this is definitely going to be another Hydro Cannon. So I'm not going to shield because that's not going to KO. I can tank it and throw another Surf, which if they don't shield will give me the lead advantage and they don't. So now we're at one shield to one shield and they've revealed the Giratina. And it looks like I actually brought Alolan Muck this time. So I'm going to answer with the Alolan Muck. They bring out their um, Snorlax. Okay, so I did not even include the um, uh, the Giratina Altered in this comp. Um, apparently what I did was open with Lapras, bring Alolan Muck, and then Swampert. Um, which now that I think about it, I actually really, really like that comp. Because you're going to have answers for a lot. And Alolan Muck and Swampert have very good synergy sitting next to each other, right? Because they cover each other's weaknesses. Um, a core breaker, obviously, of running that line would be something like um, Armored Mewtwo, or if they just run straight BBML and they bring, you know, Cresselia, Registeel, Mudmetal, etc. I think I'd still have trouble. Um, but this is one of the comps that I ran and I tested, I remember, because I, if they brought a Melmetal, which sometimes people like to open with it, but if they did, I would still potentially have an answer to it, whether it's going to be a KO with a Dark Pulse from the Alolan Muck or, you know, a Hydro Cannon and or, and or Earthquake from the, uh, the, um, I almost said Mel Metal. It's Swampert from the, from the Swampert. So, um, and as you know, Alolan Muck can be a good, if not great answer against Giratina Altered. So that game was GG's. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so it looks like I went in with the same thing. Lead Lapras, bring Alolan Muck and the Swampert. Um, Swampert's obviously main weakness is Venusaur, which I don't see a lot, but for the most part, I can handle that very well between Lapras and, and or Alolan Muck. So we see a Giratina Altered open. It looks like they're not opting to switch out, which is pretty interesting. So now they do after they threw their ancient power. So they use their energy and then swapped. So I'll build up a couple more ice shards of energy. Then I'll throw a surf and swap myself into the Swampert, which for the most part, Swampert is a very hard answer to Caesar. There's not much he can really do to Swampert, save for these neutral night slashes, which I guess, you know, if they do get the attack boost, then that can, that can kind of suck because you'll basically be forced to use a shield. Otherwise your Swampert's going to go down. Uh, but we are able to throw back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons at the Caesar before they get off another charge move. And um, another thing about that matchup to consider is um, a lot of people will run Bullet Punch on a Caesar, and Swampert is very, very resistant to Bullet Punch. He does not care about the Bullet Punch damage. And we see the uh, Giratina Altered come back in again. I miscounted. I didn't really, you know, manage or I guess keep track of the energy that well because 
They definitely did not have an ancient power at that point. They should not have had access to another one and I shielded anyways. So that was a bad use of a shield on my part, to be honest with you. Uh, but at this point, I'm like, okay, since I made a bad call and I have an answer, I'll just let the Lapras go down, then come in with my Alolan Muck, which did force the swap. So they reveal their Swampert. And then I swap into my own Swampert to, um, I guess, I was, I, I would have thought that would have been a sack swap, but I guess since I had a Hydro Cannon and it looks like I lost the CMP tie, um, I used the shield and put out the damage, which I might have actually needed to do that because of how fast, you know, Swampert can be with um, generating energy. I'll need it to be a little bit lower health so I can take it out with the Dark Pulse and then be able to answer this Giratina Altered in the back with another Dark Pulse. No matter what they have at this point, none of the moves are going to one hit KO. Even if they got off um, two Ancient Powers or two Dragon Claws, it's not going to KO the Muck at this range. So that's um, that's GG's. GG's trainer. All right, going into the next one, looks like I ran exactly the same team. And I might be talking a little more quiet. That's because I did just get off stream. It's a little bit late as well, too. I don't want to wake anybody up or be a nuisance. So um, they open up with the Swampert. Again, I'm pretty familiar with this matchup in the lead. I'm pretty confident. And I knew for a fact there that they did not have the Earthquake, they just didn't have the energy for it. So I will take the Hydro Cannon, not use a shield, continue building energy. And funny enough, they answered with a Venusaur. So, okay, I'm like, we can win this matchup. I threw the Ice Beam, which they shielded. I believe at this point I throw a Surf to bait to get another shield, which I think it did. It did get another shield, so the bait was successful. Then I'll throw in one more Ice Shard. And then as you can see, I swap into the Alolan Muck, which will resist that Frenzy Plant damage and I will I will deal with the uh, the Venusaur threat this way because I feel like I want to save the Lapras at this point. This was just kind of a gut instinct play that I had there. It wasn't necessarily like, you know, I can read your mind. I know what you have in the back. It's more so like just based on how they've played. I feel like they don't want to see the Lapras um, against something else too. They don't want to see the Lapras against the Venusaur, but they also don't want the Lapras to see what they have in the back, which as you can see, it is the, uh, the Giratina altered here. So that's... It's kind of closed out at this point because I can take a few hits with the uh, Swampert here. I can throw the Earthquake and the game is pretty much closed because, you know, all three things that they brought between the Swampert, Venusaur, and Giratina altered um, can lose to Lapras. And also, you know, considering as it pops up here in a sec, I still have three Pokemon left. So I have Sack Swaps available like that um, and I can, you know, manage the energy but also manage the amount of damage that I'm taking. Um, pretty well. So it puts them at a bigger disadvantage. Now at this point I kind of have two answers to the Giratina Altar that are both kind of lower health. So you probably saw that play. I might run that back in slow-mo, but I baited the charge move by swapping the um, Alolan Muck in because I knew they were building up a lot of energy. And then I basically sacrificial swapped into the Lapras and they've used all their energy and I can throw the Dark Pulse for the KO. GG's trainer. Good thing they didn't get the boost. <laughs> but that was it. Again, I'm not exactly sure how many battles out of that I won. I guess if you kept track then you know overall i felt like i did very very well with lapras i do think at the end of the day the um team that i ended up running with the lapras in the last set of this upload um was more successful and i felt more comfortable with it so it was um lapras alolan muck and then swampert in the back i think you potentially could run that the same way with leading swampert but um you know again I just prefer leading with the Lapras because that, that lead Articuno strategy from King, that, that's why. Because you can still lose in the Swampert matchup. All I have to do is shield the first Hydro Cannon and the Articuno is going to win after they debuff you with an Icy Wind. And that is not the case at all if I open Lapras and they open with Articuno. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about Lapras overall in the Ultra League. Do you use it? Do you not use it? Do you want to use it? If you did use it, would you use it differently? How would you comp Lapras? Um, but yeah, I like Lapras very, very much. It's done me a lot of favors, honestly. A lot of the battles that I bring Lapras and I use Lapras in, I end up winning for the most part. I can honestly say Lapras in my performance currently for rank 9 in the Ultra League gives me consistently above an 80% win rate. And that's just a guesstimation. But overall, I feel like Lapras is very, very good. Even with its weaknesses, it's definitely underutilized. Um, but yeah, watch out for that Polyrath, especially especially the Polyrath Open. You gotta watch out for that Poly. Um, but again, that's it for the video. So subscribe if you feel my vibe, power up, punch the notification bell for all that PVP content. Again, as a reminder, I do stream live on Twitch currently every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I think I start at 8 p.m. Eastern and then 5 p.m. Pacific. If you wanna follow me on Twitch for these teams and everything in a, in a, in a live setting, then feel free to drop a follow below. But yeah, battlers, we'll see you in the next video. Have a, have a good stinking day.